Hello, simplifiers. Today we're here to build on the getting to know your, your data with Elasticsearch talk by presenting the open source SOC. So in our first talk, we kept the components very generic to discuss the, the theory and the principle behind collecting data into Elasticsearch on your network. Today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some specific examples of products you can use for your open source SOC. So at the heart is going to be our SIM solution, which is Elasticsearch. Into that, we're going to be ingesting Wazoo. And now Wazoo is a host IDS with agents that you're able to deploy on pretty much any operating system out there. It comes with a rule base and a bunch of monitoring and is a rich source of events that feeds naturally into Elasticsearch as a backend, even including a whole bunch of dashboards that make visualizing that data very easy. Along with that, we've got MISP as a threat intelligence source. We've got either Zeek, Suricata as our IDS. We're running PFSense as a firewall and we also have our Simplify Community Edition. Now, to be honest, Simplify Community Edition is not open source, but we're including it in here because it's still free for you to use. So let's take a look at our network diagram now and how it changes with these new components. We've got Zeek and PFSense running over here at the perimeter, feeding both syslog and NetFlow data into FileBeat. And the beautiful thing is, is that there is already a Zeek uh, module for FileBeat, which will normalize all of our data into the ECS format. Uh, those feed into FileBeat, which feeds into Elasticsearch, along with our Wazoo agents. From our previous talk, we had our generic Windows Domain Controller and Linux Box also feeding data into Elasticsearch. Now, it's important to remember that Elasticsearch, at its heart, is really an event store, and there needs to be a way to differentiate alerts from events. And there's various ways to do that. You can either have an index, which is purely alerts. Maybe you have a watcher rule set up, or, or maybe you have a source of data where all of the information being pushed into the index is of value to you and is considered an alert. In which case, your connector query to your source solution would be take in everything. The other option is, is if there is a specific field within the data, something like event risk score, and you define a threshold. I'd like to pull in everything that has a value greater than four. Well, great, that can be defined at the connector level as well. The slightly more complicated solution would be when you're trying to pull from an index that contains a lot of data, both events and alerts. In that case, the query looks a little bit more complicated. What I like to do there is actually use a negation query. And what I mean by that is instead of specifying in my search what it is that I want, I tend to specify what it is that I don't want. And what that does for us is if you ever come across a new event or an alert that's never been seen before, you're still going to ingest it and make sure that it's not missed. Once we have our alerts ingested into Simplify and we've defined a playbook that uses MISP as an enrichment source to pull down IOCs, our analysts are now able to do intelligent case management within the platform. And that's very important that they can make good, rapid decisions based on the enrichment data and based on the single pane of glass that we provide them. Obviously, this is a lot of products, not all of which are necessary in your environment, but if you do see either on the HIDs, NIDs, firewall agents, Wherever you, wherever you see a gap in your infrastructure, I strongly recommend considering some of these products as they provide a lot of value at no cost to you. Thank you so much for joining us today.